Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. The subject of today's video newsletter, well, we're gonna take a look at short run, pass fail um, control charts. Uh, so I've recently released this book, Statistical Process Control for uh, Small Batch Production. And some of the people that have bought the book, they sent me some comments and said, oh, how about some pass fail type charts? Why aren't they, why aren't they in there, etc.? So we're gonna have a little talk about the, the pass fail uh, charts and whether they can be used or not. Um, the link to this book, by the way, is in the comments section of the video below. Um, if you're into some more uh, technical things and if you're a world-class engineer, you'll definitely wanna be interested in design of experiments. Design of experiments for 21st century engineers, a practical approach of learning the most about your processes. And finally, if you want a Six Sigma green belt, black belt, and you really wanna know how to use what you've learned and make pots and pots and cash for your company, Drink tea and read the paper. It is a practical way to apply your Six Sigma tools. There's very little maths in this book. It is all about application and making money. So there are the three books. You can get them all from lulu.com and the links are down below. Thank you for your support. Now let's talk. Pass fail. Pass fail in short run situations. I suppose the, the reason why it's not in the it's not in the book, there's a couple of reasons. The first one is if you do genuine pass fail assessment, typically the sample sizes are massive one to three thousand to get a good estimate of what's going on. If you're doing um, variable data, you're measuring something, dimensions, measuring the volts, etc. We only need 30 to 50 data points. So you can see if we talk in short run, this fits. If we talk in short run, it doesn't fit. And it's very difficult to short circuit this. Um, you know, um, you could try and, you know, let's say you were, and let's go back to the books. If you were printing books and you were looking at um, mistakes in the printing of the cover, does it pass or does it fail? Probably those books are the same, potentially. Um, they're the same size. Uh, maybe they've got a similar amount of text on them. They're just as easy or difficult to print, etc. So if you were trying to say, does the cover pass or does the cover fail? Maybe you could put those three products on the same pass fail chart. And of course the chart that you would typically use is the P chart. which is proportion or percent. Now you could combine two or three products to get the thousand data points really quickly, potentially, if they're all similar like that. So that would be a way of short circuiting the sample size for each product. So you could use the same technique that you're using for variable data, which is to try and put similar products all on the same chart. The other technique, of course, which is again, uh, it's, it's count data, it's discrete data, um, is the count chart. So the count chart. Now what the count chart is doing is it's counting the number of defects in each item. So if I went through this book and I um, counted the number of typos, in the book, I'm just counting, and I could, you know, I could plot that on a graph. The difficulty, though, is this this book's got quite a lot less pages, uh, just about 100 pages. This book's got about 300 pages in. So, can I put these two on the same chart? 
Well, not with a count chart, the C chart. What you could use, I think, is known as the U chart. And what the U chart would do for you is to normalize these two different sizes of product. So the U chart would be defects per page as opposed to defects per book. If we do defects per book and the books are dramatically different in size, you can't really represent them on the same, on the same graph. But if I did defects per page, that normalizes the result. And once it's normalized, then this chart could be used as a short run SPC chart. What does short run mean? You're putting multiple products on one chart and you're using all the data you're using all the data from all the different products on the one chart you're using all the data to calculate the limits now the reason why I didn't put it in the book specifically so some people mentioned well you don't mention um, count data discrete data in the book now there's a reason for that the U chart already exists it's a it's a standard Schuert control chart the, the variables charts where you normalize the dimension to the target or you, you normalize the dimension based on standard deviation um, isn't in standard Schuert uh, methodology. So that's why the book is telling you those things. It's not talking about the U chart, but the U chart potentially is the one where you could short run it and it allows you to put multiple products on the same chart and it's a great chart to use. So I would recommend the, the, the U chart. This thing is, is never gonna work. To be honest, pass-fail data is always terrible. If you can get away from pass-fail data, I would always recommend that you do that. And you can see that it's very difficult to make some of the tools work for you. Um, it's difficult to make an ordinary control chart work for you with pass-fail data. Um, even if you're doing long runs, it's difficult. So pass-fail data is very, very poor, and that's why it's very difficult for us to design tools that help you to understand your processes really well. Use variable data, use the U-chart, buy my short run SPC book, send me any questions you like about statistical process control. It is a brilliant tool that's not used nearly enough. You can literally take data from your process and you can make free money with SPC. Piece of paper and a pencil for free money. Why wouldn't you use this? Go and buy books on statistical process control and get some free cash.